What is going on you guys? It's your boy Get Hooked TV here back at it again with another video for you guys. And today what I wanted to talk about with you guys were how to jig the Cape Cod Canal. So I've made a few uh, slides of, I drew a few slides of paper for you guys to look at, read, and I hope this video will help you guys out and uh, give you some better success at the Cape Cod Canal in the future. So. How to jig the Cape Cod Canal. But first, before I get started, I would like you guys to subscribe to my channel, Get Hooked TV. Uh, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to this, and fish on as always. <clears throat> so, what I want to get to the point is what is jigging? Jigging in the canal is something that is very popular around in the region where guys out there like to cast out really heavy jigs that are like up to four, five, even six ounces <clears throat> into a really hard current. So they could get down deeper for some bigger fish because they don't want to catch any schoolies, they want to catch the big stuff. Some, the reason why jigging is effective is because sometimes the big fish stay deep under during the day. The canal's currents can go up to 4 knots or 4.8 miles an hour. And sometimes faster if it is the new or the full moon phases. The canal can go 40 or, four or more feet deep. So if you guys want to ignore the schoolies on like topwater or any swim baits, I would definitely recommend you to you do jigging to catch some bigger fish. <clears throat> so what lure do you want to use? I normally prefer any jig you would like, but the reason why I'm going to talk about this is there are some differences, so it's up to you guys to see which one works better. Uh, when I work some savages, you see it has like a pointy nose. Uh, it normally like gets stuck up in rocks a little bit easier like it digs into the rocks and you get you have trouble like getting it out um, What I normally use are algags Which have like a rounded nose and like a little bit of an angle so it swims a little once it's hitting the bottom uh, Depends on the current go to four or five or even more ounces so start with like four or three and a quarter and see how long it takes you to hit the bottom. If you don't feel the bottom, go heavier. Um, so step one, plan your tides uh, for just ignore those arrows. Uh, so for the full moon, what you want to use are colorful lures. And for the new moon, you want to use dark lures. So the reason why is bass normally could get spooked by the color, so definitely use colorful or mackerel pattern jigs uh, on the moon phases, so when that happens. Uh, the reason why that this is effective is full moon and new moon tides, they have much faster current. Why? Uh, bait gets trapped into the canal, which allows bass to go in for the feed. So normally the current goes all over the place. Some spaces it goes really fast. Some it goes the other way. Uh, so mackerel get mackerel or bunker or squid, whatever bait there is out there right now. Uh, it gets trapped in the canal, which allows bass to go in for the feed. Um, so okay, we got the uh, tides figured out. So how do you find these holes? First, you need to find some current disturbance for structure. So for example, if the current is going pretty fast and then at one point it goes really slow and you get like barely almost like slack water, that is how, that is one way you could tell that there are holes on the bottom. That means there are current now uh, blocking the cur no, current. There are structure or rocks and holes that are blocking the current for, and that causes it to like slow down. Uh, tide switches will vary, so what I'm saying here is, if you think you found a hole, uh, no, ignore that. Tide switches will vary, so the reason why I'm saying this is, sometimes the current could, like, go one way, and the tide goes one way, and it hits that current, and you can see the hole, but if the next tide, it does that, you won't see, because the current, is, the structure is just basically placed like that. 
Uh, if you think you found a hole, try to cast around it and uh, try to cast around it and time how long the drop will be. So basically what I experimented is where there are where there is current, I normally drop it, my jig, and it normally goes down for like about six, seven, nine seconds, depends. And then once I find a hole, it could go up to 15, uh, or even longer, depends. So that is one way you could tell you found a hole. Um, try to cast around it and time how long the drop will be. If it is a short time, then you cast at the hole and take much longer, then you found a hole. Establish that. So once you found the hole, the current, for example, is going that way and you're casting forward. Uh, bass are really lazy fish when it comes to the lack of bait. So they sit in these holes to get away from the current and wait for the bait to come for them for the ambush. So normally like the current normally like little waves and like you'll just see like calm water and then waves again. Not waves, but like you get the point. Uh, when you cast, you wanna like hit the very front, not right into the hole because you it sometimes like might go past the hole and yeah so once you hit there you just jig it and then you let your bait fall down and then normally what I normally get is on the drop is when the bass hit it so be ready to hold on to that uh, I think I already established this about the tides on how the how it all works so the tides go in this way and the current in the structure of the rocks are like this and there's a hole right here it you will obviously uh, not really see much of that happening but if you see this then you will see some of that happening happening uh, it works very well at night why bass like to stay deep at night so they find a hole so try to find a hole before it gets dark to put it, put the jig right in their face. So they like to stay deep. They don't like moving around on top. So good luck trying to catch a bass on top water. Of course that's possible, but I found the most luck being jigs, eels, etc. Uh, the way you want to pump the rod is normally the most uh, natural ways I found was just lightly pump it just like give it a nice little tap um uh, not too hard because you will obviously fatigue a lot more and it will hurt your back and it's not as natural like i don't think if you were a bass i don't think you would want to see a matter go boom all the way up like that so normally i find the most luck with light little taps and i spend more time doing that so that was just a little quick video for you guys and i would like Thanks for watching a lot. Subscribe, like, share, and fish on.